Hello everyone, let me show you about this new colored pencil technique, particularly Prisma Color Premier colored pencil technique that I've been studying and experimenting with for the past couple of days already. And uh, now I'm ready to show you because I can see that it's really successful, this technique, this new technique. Because um, if you are familiar with my channel, uh, almost all my colored pencil tutorial, particularly Prisma Color, I use the burnishing technique. That is the most uh, typical and uh, widely used technique when it comes to Prisma Color, the burnishing technique wherein you apply pressure to flatten the tooth of the paper and create smooth skin tone. But there are problems with the burnishing technique that most colored pencil artists encounter. Uh, when you burnish, sometimes um, you should be willing to uh, consume more colored pencils because you really press hard. To, to create a smooth skin tone. Another problem with burnishing technique is you tend to lose the details because when you press hard to burnish, all the little details that you put, especially if you are trying to create uh, hyper-realistic or realistic drawings wherein there are lots of small tiny details, skin pores, etc. that you want to preserve as much as possible. But with burnishing technique, there is a high possibility that you won't do that because um, of the pressure that you apply. The details may no longer be seen in your portrait. So those are the typical problems with when it comes to the burnishing techniques uh, that is usually done with Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils. But with this technique, there's no burnishing. And another problem with burnishing is that we encounter, I know you, you, you also find it um, a bit annoying is that uh, burnishing can bloom you know, there, there is the, the natural wax bloom that is so intense and annoying sometimes a bit annoying but um, we live with that because we know that Prismacolor and other wax based pencils have that characteristic especially when they are burnished but with this new technique I call it uh, it, it doesn't bloom as you can see as much or at all I, I can see that with this technique that I've been uh, experimenting and studying in the past couple of days I can see that um, there is no bloom at all and I use pure Prismacolor as, and as you can see this is fully blended but not burnished because I don't put pressure I just use very light pressure to create this kind of skin tone and uh, I'm excited to show you this new technique I call it the dry technique so while it's raining very heavily outside uh, I hope you watch the entire video because you will learn this new technique and at the same time you will avoid all those problems that uh, typically uh, are, um, arise when you use wax based colored pencils or Prismacolor using the burnishing technique so are you, are you excited with this new kind of technique that I'm gonna show you using Prismacolor? By the way, my reference photo is one of my favorite Filipino actresses, uh, Miss Anne Curtis. So this is really hardcore skin tone uh, uh, drawing that uh, uh, I will be sharing with you using this new... Uh, um, as far as my channel is concerned, I've been telling you, uh, even with my last tutorial, I've been telling you about the burnishing technique. But this time, this is the dry technique that I'm gonna be showing you. So here is the raw... Uh, video real time so I hope you can bear with me bear with my English bear with the the, uh, the long video drawing tutorial video using Prismacolor premier colored pencils so here now we are going to start so this is the entire process of this new technique that uh, I've been um, experimenting for the past couple of days already and uh, I hope you spend uh, a little bit of your time and do not skip on the video because you will learn especially if you struggle with colored pencils uh, particularly Prismacolor you will learn something different something new but um, something that is possibly or that possibly can be easier to do this is called the dry technique so the goal of this technique is to I'm not saying that you abandon or you don't do the burnishing this is just another way of dealing with Prismacolor aside from uh, just uh, typically burnishing the pigments of the colored pencil. So here, um, we start, uh, as usual, we start with the layering. Um, and uh, here, the three things we are going to, to learn or to hopefully, uh, these three things are the things that we will avoid that usually arise when it comes to wax-based colored pencils such as Prismacolor. And they are the bloom of the, the wax uh, colored pencils. And uh, we are trying to avoid to erase the details that we put, uh, the details of the skin tone, uh, because burnishing uh, is likely to do that, to erase all those tiny details that we put because we, we use uh, hard pressure. And lastly, we, we want to um, to consume lesser colored pencils because we do not apply um, harder pressure. So here, uh, in this uh, first part is we do the layering technique. So the colored pencils that I use here, the first colored pencil that I use is the Black Cherry. 
this is 10, PC 1078, uh, the Black Cherry. So, um, for those of you who are asking how to pick the colored pencils uh, to use, I, I think uh, there is no uh, formula on that. It really depends on the reference photo. It really depends on the skin tone that you are trying to achieve. So, um, what you need to do is to just practice. Do swatches, just practice because um, this is the kind of skill that, that the choosing of color pens is the kind of skill that you will develop in time. So don't rush on it. Um, there is no specific colors to use. It really depends on a lot of factors. So just uh, continue practicing and studying the, the colors. So this is the black cherry, my first layer. And here I'm going to add some of the details. And later on, what I want is to preserve all these details. I don't want them to be erased or to be uh, not visible uh, because when you, we do the burnishing, that is what usually happens. As if you are, if you've been using Prismacolor in the burnishing technique uh, for a while, you will um, understand what I'm talking about. Because when you burnish, you tend to lose all those details. So it's useless to add um, tiny details on the skin when you are going to burnish them. Um, anyway, so uh, those details will just disappear, so it's pointless to draw them and then burnish later on. But um, burnishing technique is still a very good technique because they create very nice, beautifully saturated, smooth skin tone. So I'm still gonna be doing the burnishing technique, eh, but uh, this is uh, another way, another um, technique, the dry technique. As you can see, I uh, keep my pencil uh, sharp, very sharp, because I want to feed the tooth of the paper with the uh, uh, with the pigments so I'm using a uh, uh, circular motion to um, make it easier to blend by the way the paper that I use here is the Strathmore 300 series vellum surface so this is a bit it has a little bit more texture compared to the smooth surface and yet as you can see we still was able to create a very nice smooth it's still raining very heavily outside um very smooth skin tone even if we didn't do the burnishing technique here just this new technique that i'm showing you the dry technique so so here it is can you see the details that i added right here the tiny skin pores so i'm putting it here and i don't want to lose them when i blend so it really is a matter of preference. What do you prefer? Do you want to prefer very smooth skin tone with almost no detail at all? Or you want very detailed skin tone? Because when you burnish, it's almost impossible to add details using colored pencils because the tooth of the paper is flattened. So you will not be able to add tiny skin details like what I'm doing right here. Can you see it? All those tiny details. So now I'm going to be applying or layering my next colored pencil here, which is, where's that? This one. This is the PC 1032 Pumpkin Orange, this one. So I'm gonna first sharpen it. So I'm just gonna layer it over our first layer. Very, very lightly, circular motion. Because I'm using a, um, a more textured surface, the Prisma, uh, the Strathmore uh, Bristol Vellum surface. Okay, so again, this is uh, the second layer already. So for those of you who are um, on the process of studying colored pencils, I hope uh, this kind of drawing tutorial can somehow help you. So uh, again, this is the dry technique. I call um, the, the burnishing technique the wet technique so everything here should be very very lightly so the next prism, the next prisma color is the moss green the pc 1097 this is the moss green i'm gonna layer it on top of the shadowed uh, part I don't know if she's wearing makeup. I think this is makeup. That's why I can see a little bit of like greenish color. So draw what you see. That is uh, another nice rule 
with colored pencils. So whatever you see on your reference photo, if you're trying to achieve realism, just just use colors even if it feels a bit unlikely to you. But if you can see it, just put it there. So that is another rule in... The next layer is the pink. So I'm gonna cover uh, this entire area with the pink. As you can see, this part here and here, the eye bags, uh, they are already blended using this dry technique. So you can see the difference of the layer. This is not blended yet. This is the uh, blended part using, not burnishing, but this dry technique. But do not skip there yet because uh, you want to see how I uh, put all these layers together. So this is the pink. But you want to make blending easier by keeping your pencils very very sharp. As you can see here, I'm using a textured surface, this is a vellum surface, but because I uh, do it very slowly with a uh, very sharp point pencil, um, it's a bit smoother already. So I, uh, I'm sure I'm not going to um, find it hard to blend later on. So at this stage, I'm gonna be doing the first level of blending where I'm gonna use this blending stump and sharp cutter knife. So what I do, because the, the blending stump already has uh, uh, pigments on it because I already used it on uh, this part. So what I do to make the tip clean is to just, to do it uh, quickly, I just cut, use cutter knife and I'm just gonna remove the tip. Okay, and by doing that, my tip is already clean there. So I wanna, I just wanna push the tip so it won't be too hard and sharp. Okay, so the tip is a bit pointed but it's still very nice and soft because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this with very light pressure to blend all these layers of colors that I put. So what you do is you use the blending stump in circular motion with very light pressure because you want to preserve the details of the skin tone so it helps to break down the pigments even more and push them into the tooth of the, this vellum paper so this is the first level of the blending that you need to do on this dry technique okay so as you can see that the text the, the, the detail of the skin tone is already this is still there it's not totally blended away so and because I'm using uh, um, uh, light pressure on this first level of blending I was able to preserve the tooth of the paper so they are not totally flattened but um, because of this blending stump we were able to get rid some of the tooth of the paper okay but you can expect uh, that at this stage you will not be able yet to achieve this level that uh, similar to the burnish blending uh, level because uh, at this stage the blending stop uh, will not fully blend the skin tone because uh, this is just the first level of the blending so there the um, you can see that it really blends um, and breaks down the the chunks of the uh, colored pencils and now I'm back with my pink So still very very lightly, I just want to blush the parts of the skin tone. Because of the blending stump, um, the, the skin tone is already quite smooth. And now after this, I'm going to be using a couple of lighter colored pencils here, just to blend them a little bit. So I will be using this colored pencil. This is the lavender.
and then this one very nice color this is the uh, PC 1032 the pumpkin orange so these are exactly the same colors I used on this uh, blended finish part So as you can see, the details that I added uh, a while ago here are still here, very much visible. Alright, and then lastly, I use this uh, color. This is, what's this? This is the Nectar. The Nectar, this is PC1092 Nectar. Again, I'm not pressing very hard. I don't want to burnish. We are not using. We are not doing the burnishing technique here. We are doing the dry technique. As you can see, there is no wax bloom with this technique. The details are preserved, but not yet as fully blended as what we usually have with the burnishing technique. But uh, you will see that uh, it will blend really, really nice with this dry technique and this. Uh, technique that I'm showing you right now and now with the second level of blending we go back to use our blending stamp to just uh, blend uh, the skin tone even further we want to um, because as you can see the tooth of the paper if you can see it here is still very much visible compared to this part where we don't burnish but we use this technique that I'm showing you right now so this is the second blending using the blending stamp So even if you blend above the details of the skin tone, uh, the blending stamp is not damaging the, the details or it's not uh, making the details disappear. Second to the last step is by using the white but not as a burnisher but by just uh, showing some of the a little bit highlighted part of the skin tone. Like on this part, we want to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm using the white with light pressure. Unlike with the burnishing wherein we use the white to using hard pressure to flatten the tooth of the paper. Here, we are not trying to flatten the tooth of the paper um, because uh, that is what we do with the burnishing. Here, this is the dry technique. So we use the white just uh, how we use a regular colored pencil typically. Just to, um, to show some of the highlighted parts now this last step is the game changer for me because the, the tooth of the paper are still there very much visible and we want to avoid that we want the tooth of the paper not show through with our drawing to make it more realistic like on this part this is fully blended with this last uh, level of blending that I'm gonna show you with this dry technique so with sharp knife and then I picked this colored pencil so um, I can say that this colored pencil this particular color is something that we can use uh, on on any kind of reference photo any kind of skin tone this is the safest color to use with this last uh, blending part this is the beige Okay, this is the beige. This is the PC997. Okay, so I hope you have this uh, color on your palette. This is the beige. I like this color because this is like a combination of flesh but a bit yellowish. So really, really the, the lightest and the safest pencil to use on any kind of skin tone. So this is very light, yellowish, and um, with a big touch of light flesh. So very safe to use. So why I say that is very safe to use because this is what I'm going to use on this final blending to hide the tooth of the paper on this part that's, that is still there. Still, you still see the tooth of the paper and you want to avoid that. But you don't want to burnish. You don't want to use white or this beige to apply pressure and try to burnish all those uh, tiny uh, uh, tooth of the paper. So this is what you do. You get the beige, you get the sharp cutter and just want to expose uh, some parts, uh, some part of the uh, the what do you call this the lead okay there and then I'm gonna use my it's it's not sanded paper but this is um, uh, a metal metal sanded sanded metal 
I don't know what it's called. It's a clip. This is a. Uh, I usually use this with charcoal pencils to sharpen the charcoal pencils. But here I use it as a sandpaper. So if you don't have this particular uh, object, uh, you can use regular sandpaper. What you do is you just powderize your Prismacolor. Very unlikely because uh, we think as Prismacolor as uh, you know uh, waxy and wet. But yes, you can powderize your Prismacolor. This is already the powdered, powderized uh, Prismacolor, the beige, this one. So this is very nice and fine, as you can see. So uh, yes, we can powderize the Prismacolor. So what I do is I use a very nice, solid, soft, uh, this is um, literally a makeup brush. So I bought it on a local makeup store or drugstore here in the Philippines. So this is very nice and solid and very, very soft. So what we do is, we just get some of this powderized beige Prismacolor right there and we're just going to apply it on the skin tone using circular motion we press a bit harder um, it doesn't matter because uh, we, uh, the, the brush will not flatten the tooth of the paper because it's really nice and soft so the idea, I know you are getting already the idea is to hide the tooth of the paper using this powderized beige Prismacolor can you see it as you can see the, the texture or the, the, the details of the skin tone is not uh, is still visible and not covered by this powderized Prismacolor So now, can you see how beautiful the skin tone um, is fully blended using this technique, the dry technique. I love it because I don't have to do the burnishing. I don't need to push hard on my pencils. I preserve my details and I hide the tooth of the paper, which is something that I know uh, most of you uh, really, really, really want. Because you want details. Uh, you want smooth skin tone at the same time and it's i understand that it's really hard to achieve using the burnishing technique so here now you can see i created a very very nice skin tone using this new method um, this is an alternative i'm not saying that you abandon the burnishing technique this is just one of the prisma color technique that uh, you may want to try for yourself and uh, find out if this technique will work for you so but uh, lastly, what I do here is just little bit adjustments just to correct some of the tones. So uh, using the same pencils that I use, what I do is I just uh, go ahead and blend a little bit more. As you can see, no bloom at all with this technique. And then the white to lighten up a bit some of the parts. Okay, just go back with the same pencils to be used. If you don't have electric eraser, I suggest that you get one of these. These are not very expensive, but this will make wonders on your colored pencil drawings because they create tiny details, highlighted details that make the skin tone even more realistic. So this is how I use it. So as you can see, the detailed areas here, uh, there are some um, highlighted parts here that will serve as skin pores. So just gonna use it to make realistic skin tone. And then lastly, I'm gonna use white to just um, make a more realistic highlights. So there you go. This is just a, um, a piece of this entire portrait. I hope you wait 
until I finish this using exactly the same technique that I just shared with you. I hope you find value, especially for those who struggle with Prismacolor, uh, to try this um, newer technique. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.